welcome back to Pokey National Geographic. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and I can't wait to bring you back to the wonderful investigation of the creatures that live alongside us. Welcome to the Pot Bottom Desert within the Galar region. This desert is an enclosed area covered in sand and frequently buffeted by intense sandstorms. However, on some days, the desert calms, revealing itself to be the home of many spectacular Pokemon species. I'm here today to give you an in-depth look at one of the world's most famous ground-type Pokemon. This is, of course, the mole Pokemon, Diglett. Diglett usually live about one yard underneath the sand dunes, where they feed on plant roots. They sometimes appear above ground to spend some time in the sun. However, their skin is very thin. If they are exposed to light for too long, their blood heats up, causing them to grow extremely weak. You might notice the small hairs on Diglett's body as well as how it wiggles around when above the ground. Diglett have far stronger senses than you or me, and it uses its motion combined with those hairs to be aware of its surroundings. This allows Diglett to quickly burrow underground if it senses danger. If you're ever in Unova and wish to stop by my home in Flachessie Town, you'll be able to see how local farmers work with Diglett in order to grow berries and crops. The reason this happens is because wherever this Pokemon burrows, the soil is left perfectly tilled for planting crops. This soil is made ideal for growing apricorns and allows local farmers to live harmoniously with the Diglett species they raise. Because of how Diglett keep a part of their body underground, it is still unknown what the rest of their body looks like. Their height is assumed to be 8 inches with a weight of 1.8 pounds, but this is highly speculated. However, something we do have confirmed is Diglett's method of evolution. You see, Diglett fits into the same evolutionary type that includes Magnemite and Doe Duo. Here you see how one Diglett seems to become three Diglett, but instead this process of reproduction leads to the creation of a new Pokemon, known as Dugtrio. While not much is known about Dugtrio, its behavior is similar to that of Diglett, and has been observed to almost be somehow of a hive mind, connecting three Diglett together. While this information isn't fully confirmed, it is still being tested and researched to this very day. Today, we're exploring the wondrous landscapes of Viridian Forest. Many young trainers tend to pass through the forest on distinctly marked paths. However, a majority of the forest's grand foliage is untouched by humans due to the incredible number of territorial beedrill that call this place home. Beedrill is a large bug and poison type Pokemon with two sets of wings, a large antenna for sensing their environment, and two massive compound eyes that give nearly 360 degree vision. This incredible sight aids Beedrill when navigating at high speeds because it allows them to easily search for food while avoiding predators like Pidgeot or Scyther. To defend themselves and their colonies from these threats, Beedrill are heavily armed with physical and chemical weaponry. Its large forelimbs have developed into cone-shaped stingers paired with their own venom glands. These stingers are capable of delivering powerful poison-type attacks like Poison Sting or Poison Jab and its abdomen even features a third stinger should an attack come from behind. These venomous weapons, however, have an alternate use. Unlike its closely related cousin Combi, Beedrill doesn't subsist solely on nectar and honey because this Pokemon is a predator. Beedrill preys on smaller bug-type Pokemon such as Caterpie or Venonat and uses its venom to incapacitate its prey. Afterwards, they bring their prize kill back to the colony for consumption and storage. The predation of leaf-eating bug-type Pokemon within its home range not only provide Beedrill with meals, but also transforms the forest it resides in by reducing consumption of nearby plants. Therefore, leaving plenty left over for the next generation of Beedrill as they start their life as herbivorous weedles. The Starter Pokemon the choice of a fire, water, or grass type Pokemon at the beginning of every trainer's journey. Each starter Pokemon is rare and unique in its own way. However, one starter Pokemon has risen to the point of popularity that surpasses its unique attributes. This Pokemon is the Cantonian fire type starter, Charmander, the lizard Pokemon. Like most starters, 
Charmander and its subsequent evolutions, Charmeleon and Charizard, are very rare to find. However, Charmander's uniqueness goes far past its status as a starter Pokemon. For example, the flame on its tail indicates Charmander's life force. If Charmander is healthy, the flame will burn bright. However, if Charmander is sick or getting closer to death, the flame will start to sputter out. A Charmander will dedicate its life to protecting the flame on its tail. However, this flame is also Charmander's source of power. This fire is what allows Charmander to learn strong moves at early ages, such as Ember and Smokescreen. It's because of this early access to strong moves and its veracity on the battlefield that Charmander was chosen to be a starter Pokemon. Many young trainers have a tendency to confuse Charmander with a dragon type, despite the fact that it evolves into a fire flying type. This confusion is understandable because Charmander has access to moves like Dragon Breath and Dragon Tail. In fact, it is theorized that in the past, Charmander was a dragon type. However, its evolution changed its typing over time. Even with that change, it still retains some of its dragon-like appearances and moves. Charmander is a fascinatingly unique Pokemon. And if you're a new trainer, then we can guarantee you that Charmander will be one of the greatest partners you will ever have. That is all we have for today's episode of Poke National Geographic. I've been Professor Ginkgo, and remember, the magical world of Pokemon is always what you make of it.